Ethereum's looking at a massive upgrade here with the Fusaka upgrade coming out on the 3rd of December. I'm going to look at some other headlines as well, what's happening in the Ethereum space, but this is some pretty big news. So make sure you hit that thumbs up, like, subscribe, and let's get into what's happening at the moment here. So first off, Ethereum supply on exchanges is dropping rapidly. Now, there isn't a clear explanation as to why this is happening, but ex exchanges aren't holding as much ETH as they used to. Maybe people are pulling it off and moving on chain. I don't know exactly, but there's definitely an ongoing trend here that we can see with uh, the ETH supply slowly moving out of exchanges. We also have seen this whale here cash in and this is the whale tra transferred 120 million in ETH after 10 years of dormancy. He bought them for just $12,400 and is now sitting on a 9,633x return. Life-changing wealth on uh, with Ethereum. So <laughs> good on this person, whoever they are. You got a bit of tax to pay there, but definitely worth cashing in on. That is a uh, Definitely life changing. Maybe it was a wallet that they had lost and now they just uh, unlocked it and went, hey, thank God I found that. Let's let's start selling. Who knows? But good on him. But let's have a look at this particular upgrade here. This is the Fusaka upgrade coming on the 3rd December. And this brings in secure scaling and a whole bunch of other changes. Some UX changes, which I think are very good for crypto adoption in general. Let's have a look at what's happening here. So first off, the L2 and roll-ups. The peer DAS, I thought was a quite interesting in how this is uh, put into place. There's a video here that talks about peer DAS. And uh, let me just play this because I think it explains it really well. So what on earth is peer DAS? Well, it stands for Peer Data Availability Sampling. And it totally flips the script on how network validators check data. See, right now, validators have to download all the transaction data from secondary networks called Layer 2s. With PeerDAS, they don't have to do that anymore. Instead, they can confirm everything is legit just by checking a few tiny random samples of the data. Instead of having to read an entire massive book from cover to cover just to make sure it's the right one, PeerDAS lets you just flip to a few random pages. It's a mind-blowingly efficient shortcut that saves a ton of time and energy I'll put a link to this uh, particular video that goes through all of the uh, Fusaka upgrades as well. And I, th I, th I thought that bit there was pretty good to just highlight for explaining what this peer DAS is. So essentially, instead of downloading and looking up the entire history of the L2s that uh, need to be rolled up into the main layer, we're just looking at certain parts of it, certain sections and confirming that it is all up to date and all good. So that increases the amount of space that is available in blocks to make that L1 uh, more usable. You can cram in more transactions there. So that's a really nice improvement there. The other one that we have here is for apps and DeFi devs. Tosaka brings lower transaction costs with instant feel UX via based pre-confirmations. Lower transaction costs is definitely something that everyone wants. This one here is around the wallet side of things. And now the new R1 Curve and EP7951, so that's Ethereum improvement proposal, are unlocking secure mobile native pass keys with simpler signatures. Now this, this one I absolutely love. So if you're using a lot of modern websites, so if you've got a Gmail account, for example, They've implemented in pass keys as well so that you can use a, a simple click and sign or a biometric to sign that it's you and be able to log into that particular ecosystem, whatever it is. Implementing that same level of security onto a wallet infrastructure makes onboarding even easier and even faster. This is one massive UX improvement that I think is really important for crypto adoption and all chains, I think, should adopt this. So we're going to see this um, uh, replicated in the Cardano ecosystem, Solana and so on. So hopefully we do see this one as well um, on Cardano so we can see a lot of growth and adoption there as well. This one here is for protocol infra, infra devs. Fusaka brings higher gas limits from 45 million to 60 million. So it gives you that much more headroom uh, for improvements there as well. 
So if you want to read more about the upgrades, I'll put the links to Ethereum roadmap there so you can learn a little bit more about what they're doing and what is involved with this particular upgrade. Now, there is some negative news as well, and this one's not good. This one's with Yearn Finance that got a lot of users on this protocol. Yearn Finance, one of DeFi's most audited protocols, just got drained yesterday. Unlimited minting bug in the YETH pool. Certec, Trail of Bits, Quantstamp, Mint Bikes have all audited Yearn contracts, plus many more. Millions spent on security theatre and users still lost everything. This is what nobody wants to talk about. No audits, completely unacceptable. With audits, still not safe. So where does this leave us? Stuck in security limbo, pretending we're ready for mass adoption when we're clearly not. Truth, the truth. Audits catch surface level bugs. There are liability shields for founders, not protecting, not, not protection for users. The checkboxes says lawyers can say, we did our due diligence, but they don't catch sophisticated exploits. They don't prevent unlimited minting bugs. They don't stop the creativity of attackers who think in ways auditors never considered. Real security doesn't start with an audit, it starts with proper foundations. Smarter asset structures that eliminate entire attack vectors, no approval mechanisms to exploit, smart contract designs with formal verification from day one, mathematically verified, not just looks good to me, protocol level protections, not band-aids on broken architecture, chains like Multiverse X, Cardano, and our grand build this in from the start. Native assets, not unlimited approvals, security by design, not by afterthought. Meanwhile, EVM chains keep building on the same broken foundations that slap audits on top like that will fix it. It won't. Yearn is just the latest proof. There will be more tomorrow and next week and next month. Until we admit that the hard truth, Web3 is still early infrastructure isn't ready and pretending otherwise just puts more risk more users at risk we can't audit our way out of fundamental flawed architecture so stop acting like we can looking back here and this is probably the main reason why i am on cardano why i have uh, hold uh, our grant as well i don't hold or part of the multi x uh, ecosystem but i'm a big holder and fan of cardano and it is all coming down to the security layer there formal verification high levels of security there cardano's never gone down in its eight years since it's launched and this is one of the big things that i love about the ecosystem and why i'm so bullish on the cardano uh, chain uh, none of the smart contracts have been have been touch wood have been hacked by uh, hackers uh, all my liquidity is still in smart contracts and i'm i'm there with a lot a high level of certainty that it won't be hacked unlike many of the other protocols and you can't expect adoption to happen when you have headlines like this on a regular basis last month the last two months uh, I, I read another report of the massive amount of hacks that had happened across the evm ecosystem it's just one after another after another after threat after threat had been found and the evm space is plagued by this unfortunately and hopefully you know Projects do look at some safer measures and different ways of actually implementing their projects and, and launching on Multiverse X, Cardano and Algorand and migrating their users over. Who knows? They might. It's a hard ask because I know development is costly. It's, it's a hard thing to move users over and liquidity over and all that. But, you know, if you're starting with a safe, sound and mathematically verified protection mechanisms on the protocol itself you're in a much better starting place compared to what has happened in the space overall unfortunate news with that and um, I'm, I'm sure i'll be reporting on more in the future as well now i thought this was quite interesting to learn about and this is a quote from um, this th and this is a post from sebastian sebastian is a highly reputable uh, developer in the cardano ecosystem he's built his own blockchain as well um, he's done a lot of really cool uh, coding over the years, and he's quoting here, Core Solidity takes ideas from pure functional programming languages, e.g. Haskell and Lean. Uh, Cardano is built in Haskell. Impressive that in six years, Ethereum went from the 
biggest critics of these ideas to one of the biggest proponents, even rewriting their entire ledger and contract language around them. But this is all around functional programming, and this is one of the the core uh, security measures that Cardano has taken uh, to make sure that their smart contracts and the ledger itself is really secure. And Ethereum is shifting takes, turning that giant ship around and moving into the same uh, type of programming that Cardano is built in. It just proves that Cardano was way ahead of its time. Uh, Ethereum did get to that uh, market edge first to market. Yes, congratulations to them. And now they're trying to turn the ship around and become like Cardano with liquid staking and all these other things that make Cardano so appealing. Anyway, if you want to read more of this post here, I'll put a link down below. It does get a little bit technical, so I won't go through it in this video. Okay, that's all I have for this particular update around the Ethereum space and this Fusaka upgrade. Congratulations to the Ethereum ecosystem on this. It's going to be a really good move for them overall. Will it move the price of Ethereum? I don't know. <laughs> Usually when big news like this comes out, you see like a bit of a spike and then a market dump afterwards when people take profits. That's usually the pattern that you see. And I wouldn't be surprised if we see that happen again. Always sell on the news, right? Buy the rumor, sell the news as the saying goes. Anyway, if you got something out of this, if you enjoyed my content, please hit that thumbs up, that like, subscribe and notification bell on your way out. I'll see you guys in the next video.